My name is José Manuel Reynosa from the University of A Coruña in Spain. I'm going to present this study through the bar stiffening in semi-rigid bean to column joints. Structural steel joints have been usually considered either simple or rigid. However, the actual behavior of the connections is semi-rigid. Top and seat angle connections with double web angles are semi-rigid connections profusely used in the North American construction tradition. They have uh, economic advantages and they are suitable for reducing assembly times. This typology is also a good choice in seismic environments since it provides with high ductility and it is also suitable if the design is conceived for the construction. The stiffness of top and, top and seat angle connections can be increased by means of bolt preloading or by stiffening the angle cleats. In case of significant stresses in the panel, it is common in practice the use of welded stiffeners to protect the column. The solution can be difficult to fabricate by automatic processes and expensive when used on site, but it could be avoided with the use of threaded bars. This paper presents a study focus on the use of threaded bars in stiffened top and seat angle connections. An experimental study on joints with stiffened angles was recently developed in the structural analysis lab at the University of A Coruña. ST1 test was used to validate a base numerical model to carry out this research. Here are shown the geometries of the test. HEV 240 beams, HEA 300 column, 20 millimeters grade 10.9 volts, L 110 millimeters thick web angles, and uh, L 120. 0.98 mm thick top and seat stiffened angles. The beams were simply support and the load was applied as shown in the figure, so the top angle is the one below. The gap between the beam and the column flange in the experimental work was about 2 mm. The load cell and the actuator are located in the top of the column. The beam rotation was monitored through two inclinometers placed on the top of the beams. Finally, a wire sensor was located in the base of the column to obtain additional measures. The loading step was accomplished in the elastic range for each test. The table shows the mechanical properties of the structural members. Finite element model of ST1 test was built up to assess the test performance. Symmetry was considered, so a quota of the geometry was modeled. Eight node brick elements with reduced integration and hourglass control were selected. The material model is a simplified bilinear model with hardening. Abacus general contact algorithm was used. The tangential behavior was selected as frictionless and the normal behavior as hard contact. The simulation was run by means of the abacus explicit solver considering a quasi-static problem. The balls were not preloaded. Symmetry boundary conditions were applied. A 10 mm vertical displacement was imposed on the column through a rigid surface. Here uh, we can see the results for the displacement field, vertical displacement field. The finite element model reasonably matches the actual behavior of the joint, providing perhaps a slightly stiffer solution. 
threaded bar model was created by changing the bolts for threaded bars in the previous model. The figures show uh, the foam misses stress in the base model and in the threaded bar model. As you can see, tension stresses are not significant in the panel tension zone, but in the panel compression zone, stresses increase since the threaded bars do not work properly because there is not any clamping inside the column. Therefore, the effect of placing nuts inside the column was uh, studied. The figure shows the foam misses stress in a threaded bar model with nuts inside the column. Tension stresses in the column web slightly increase, but the compressions in the panel decrease comparing with the previous model without nuts inside the column. Now the threaded bars in the compression zone are stressed. In order to improve the comparison between the models, they were run again for a 20 mm imposed vertical displacement, which led to a stress level close to the gel stress in the column web. The figure shows the principal stress in the longitudinal direction of the beam when a section centered the panel for the three studied configurations. The most significant tension stress difference is the one regarding the models with traditional bolting and threaded bars without nuts. The peak of maximum stress in the tension zone disappears when using threaded bars. In the case of threaded bars with nuts inside the column, the distribution of tension stresses is more homogeneous in the tension zone of the panel, with a maximum difference from the model with traditional bolting above 100%. Regarding the compression zone, the curves have fewer differences. The compressions are a little higher in the model with threaded bars without nut compared to the other two models. This comparison indicates the need for placing nuts inside the column to avoid compression increments when using threaded bars. Considering the study of the deformational behavior of the column flange, when threaded bars with nuts inside the column are used, the maximum transverse relative displacement decreases about 40% with respect to the model regarding traditional bolting. The stress distribution in the column flange is again more homogeneous in the model with a threaded bar with nuts inside. Concluding, three finite element models have been worked up using traditional bolting, threaded bars, and threaded bars with nuts inside the column. When threaded bars without inner nuts are used, tension stresses disappear, but compression stresses significantly increase. For this and other practical reasons, the use of this kind of connection is not advisable. When threaded bars with inner nuts are considered, there is a better stress distribution and compression stresses are reduced in the panel. Besides, the column flange deformations and stresses are significantly reduced. The introduction of threaded bars shields the column from damage when compared with traditional bolting. This can be particularly interesting in the case of high stiffness semi-rigid joints, such as the case of end plate joints or heavy cleat tangle joints, avoiding the use of welding. The comparison with welded stiffeners had not been, uh, has not been addressed in this study, but it will be dealt with in the near future. Specifically, experimental and 
numerical analysis of end plate joints with threaded parts are currently underway. Thank you very much for your attention. I'd be glad to answer any questions uh, at the end of the session.